Have you ever wondered on the chemical reactors that are actually used in the industry? Let's check them out. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And in this specific video, guys, I have some great news for you. And I'm talking about that I'm going to be launching a new course on chemical reactors. Yes, finally, the overview of industrial chemical reactors course is going to be launched this next Wednesday. And as the name implies, we're going to be talking about chemical reactors that are used industrially, what are their applications, the type of processing, process specification, advantages, disadvantages, and type of product, and much more. So if this is a topic that sounds interesting to you or you want to learn more about it, ensure to check out the link in the description, which is actually a waiting list. This is a list in which you are going to be early bird and you're going to get the best price before launching. Not only that, you're going to get the course outline, objectives, information, trailers, and maybe one or two free classes. So ensure to check out the link and welcome on board. Now, in the meantime, let's actually get to the top list of chemical industrial reactors actually used in the industry. And the very first thing that I want to address is why I am saying so much actually used in the industry. You will see, when we study chemical reactors, we do it in the academic way, in the sense that we are always using idealities, we are using all sorts of equations and assumptions that are not likely to be encountered in the industry. Actually, this image is a great example. What we do is try to fit these real reactors to the ideal reactors that we studied back in the day. So this is a great example on why I say always actually used in the industry, because there are many types of reactors that may not be modeled academically, but end up being used in the industry. Now that we know this, let's get started with the list. The very first one will be the most classical one, steel tank reactor. And yes, this is one that we study academically, but there are certain type of adjustments that we have in real life. Actually, I would say it is the most intuitive one. It's literally a vessel. You charge all the reactants, you mix. If you have to cool down or maybe heat up, you do it. But eventually what you want to do is to obtain the products. And what we do is essentially try to favor that in a continuous process. And although this reactor may not be the best fit for all chemical reactions, this is by far one of the best and easiest to model. One of the greatest advantages is that it is very low in investment or capital, and it's also pretty cheap to operate. Some examples of industries that use these type of reactors are pharmaceuticals for the production of emulsifications, blending ingredients, creams, lotions, gels, and other cosmetic products, as well as pharmaceuticals. Another industry that you may encounter a lot of these type of reactors are the food and beverage industry. And I'm talking about fermentation of beverages, production of yogurt or dairy products, enzymatic reactions, food processing steps. I'm talking about cooking, smoking, mixing, dehydrating, flavoring, and so on. And for sure, the chemical industry. Chemical synthesis such as hydrogenation, esterification, polymerization, oxidation, and many other numerous organic and inorganic processes are going to be carried out in this great reactor. One of the most used reactor is the cracker, and as the name implies, it's going to be cracking units. But what I want to talk about is the FCC unit, the Fluid Catalytic Cracking Unit. If you're working in oil and gas, more properly in petroleum refining or maybe in petrochemical complexes, you will understand that FCC is one of the most important units after the distillation unit. Why? Because the FCC allows the recovery of certain type of heavy fuels or products that may not be quite suitable for the market and recovers that into a very high value materials. I'm talking about naphthas, like gasoline, cycle oils, and so on. The FCC could be said that recovers the leftovers via intermediate cracking. This means high temperatures and pressures, but not so extreme. It is relatively a complex process in the sense that we have a catalytic reactor, we have a catalytic recovery, but overall it's a unit that you will encounter a lot in petroleum refining. And the final objective of this unit is, of course, to improve the yields of the refinery. 
The tubular reactor, which is pretty similar to the PFR that we studied back in the day, is one of the most important ones. And actually, it makes a lot of sense. We're talking about a reactor, which is a pipe. And we know that piping is everywhere in the industry. And of course, engineers had to make a reactor out of a pipe. After all, mixing between pipelines became pretty common since the invention of piping itself. The reactor operates continuously and is quite optimal in operation compared to the steer tank reactor. Unfortunately, there are pressure drops and these may be considerable, but overall it's a great option to go to. One of the best advantages is that these type of reactors are very scalable. After all, we're talking about pipes. We can increase the diameters, we can increase their length. And the best examples for tubular reactors may be steam cracking, polymerization reactions, and of course the chemical industry production. We're talking about methanol production, ammonia, ethylene oxide, and various specialty chemicals. Let's talk about the packed bed reactor, which is one of the most common ones that you will encounter in real life. One could say that this is pretty similar to a tubular reactor because after all, a column is nothing more than a very wide pipe. In this specific case, the bed is nothing more than a solid catalyst placed in specific location. These type of reactors are used extensively in the industry because reactions can be improved with a catalyst and has now become the standard in many processes. Unfortunately, packed bed reactors have an even greater pressure drop than any of the previous reactors. But thankfully, this is counterbalanced by the high quality, high yields and high conversions that a packed bed reactor can achieve. And the most common type of industries and processes that you may encounter using these type of reactors are hydro processing, such as hydro treating or hydro cracking. We're talking about chemical processes such as oxidation and isomerization, nitration and sulfonation of dyes, pigments, and many other specialty chemicals. This reactor is kind of similar to the previous one, but not quite. We're talking about the fluidized bed reactor. In this specific case, we do have the catalyst, but it is not placed in a bed. It's actually moving along with the reactants and products. The catalyst is actually fluidized with the medium. This fluidization allows a great momentum, heat, and mass transfer control. It increases rate of reaction and it's quite used in the industry. One of the disadvantages of fluidization is that it may decrease the life of our catalyst. But once again, the benefits overwhelm the disadvantages. Examples of industries and processes that use the fluidization bed reactor are fluidized bed combustion, drying of material, the sulfurization of stack gases, and environmental applications. Finally, the bioreactor guide. And this is something that may be new in the industries, but each time I see more chemical reactors being substituted by a bioreactor that has better performance and has a better process intensification overall. The power of life or biology is great whenever talking about chemical reactions and kinetics. Many enzymes will allow production of very interesting products. They provide a very suitable environment for cell growth or biological life and a lot of biological reactions that will not occur in a normal chemical environment. They offer precise control over parameters such as temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, nutrient supply, and other specifications that will allow the optimal cell growth and desired product formation. Bioreactors are widely used in a lot of industries, more importantly, biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, food and beverage industries, and environmental applications. This and many much more are the reasons on why the biochemical reactors are booming in the traditional chemical industry. And finally, guys, there you have it. Those are the chemical reactors that I wanted to present you guys. Of course, there are a lot of other type of chemical reactors out there, but this is a small list that I would think is relevant or the top chemical reactors that I typically find out there. And as stated before, chemical reactors come in all shapes and sizes. We're talking about maybe from piping alone to very complex reactors such as vessels or maybe even more complex systems on catalyst recovery, riser system, pressurization, vacuum, vessel, reactor, and so on. But I really think that the objective or the idea of the video is that you get started to know which type of reactors are actually used in the industry. And I really hope that it helps. But if you have any comment, suggestion, or maybe I miss other type of reactors that you really think that you can find out there readily available in all the industries, let me know in the comment section. I'm pretty sure that we can get started with a great discussion. And for now, what I want to address is the new upcoming course, the overview of industrial chemical reactors.
And if you want to learn more of the chemical reactors out there, their advantages, disadvantages, selection criteria, process specification, industries, trends, and technologies, please check out the course. As stated, you can pre-order the course for a special price, but not only that, you will get some surprises and freebies. And I'm really sure that you will enjoy the course once it launches next Wednesday. On my behalf, guys, that will be it. I'll see you in the next video.